Hey everyone, Wes here. Uh, so this is a new video series on CSS Flexbox. And what that is, is a new part of CSS3 uh, that allows you to create uh, super complex and super flexible layouts uh, with, with just CSS. Uh, so previously, if you've, you've tried to do super complex layouts, especially when you're working with responsive design, uh, you'll, you'll find yourself using a combination of floats uh, variable heights, as well as uh, any number of hacks to get things to work uh, smoothly across the board. Uh, Flexbox aims to uh, do away with floats and all of those things and let us create super flexible layouts uh, with the new thing called Flexbox. Um, the reason I'm creating this web series is because Flexbox is a very, very new idea. And even for a seasoned CSS developer, it can be hard to at first wrap your head around uh, both how it works and when you should be using it uh, in the browser. Um, to add insult to injury, uh, there are actually two implementations of Flexbox out there right now. So if you do a little bit of Googling around, you're gonna find uh, a whole bunch of uh, varying tutorials as well as uh, a whole bunch of vendor prefixes on each of those ones. So if I look here, this is a little bit of code that I wrote uh, recently. Uh, just getting started with the parent, this doesn't have to do with any of the children, it took me 31 lines just to get Flexbox set up right here. Uh, so this is pretty, um, pretty scary, and even if you're a seasoned CSS developer, you might start running back to floats uh, with something like this. Uh, so the aim of the series is to really distill it down into something that is easy to understand uh, and to look into every little single uh, section of Flexbox and be able to um, figure out when we would use and what each thing does. Uh, from there, we'll take it, we'll, we'll scale it up and look at how we can make it work cross-browser as well as cross-device, when you, which is when you start looking at uh, code that looks like this. So um, get ready and I uh, hope you enjoy it. So to get started with Flexbox and to, to kind of understand what we're working with, um, I've set up some very, very basic HTML and CSS, which we'll then uh, uh, implement Flexbox onto. Uh, so as you can see here, I just have a simple HTML document. Inside the body here, I have div with a class of wrapper. Uh, that's gonna be our parent or our container. Uh, as well as I have 10 divs inside of that. Um, they each have a class of box and a class of box uh, with their unique ID, and I've got a number in, inside of them. Uh, this is just purely so that we could um, see the different divs when we're working with them in the browser. Um, you, you could imagine this as maybe um, a grid of blog posts or uh, a listing of uh, team members or something like that on a website. Uh, in the CSS here, I've done some really, really basic CSS. I've got normalize, box sizing, border box up and running. Uh, neither of these are required, required for Flexbox, however, I do recommend them. Um, and then I've just done some really, really simple, um, really, really simple content here. Uh, I've just changed the font size. I put a little bit of text shadow, and then I've put uh, a few different colors on each of the divs. Uh, so nothing really too new here. Uh, it's just so that I'm set up in the browser, I have my 10 divs, and they're scaling right across uh, the browser for us. So to get started with Flexbox, you need to take a look at our markup right away and uh, see what that looks like. To use Flexbox, you need a container, which in this case is going to be a wrapper, and then you need immediate children, which in this case are each of our boxes. Uh, so if you're ever working with Flexbox, it doesn't just apply to one element. Uh, it's kind of a, an entire thing where you need to apply certain property values to the wrapper or to the container, and you need to apply certain property values to the child, uh, which in this case is our box and box one, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so I'm gonna go down in here, and uh, I'm gonna keep my CSS. I'm just gonna write the selectors again just so that it can keep all this styling, which has nothing to do with Flexbox, separate from uh, the actual Flexbox that we're working with here. So I'm gonna go ahead and write my selector for our container, which in this class is a div with a class of wrapper. So simply just dot wrapper, open my curly braces, and the, 
the property that we want here is display, which you're probably familiar from display inline, display block, display none. Uh, but this is a new property. It's called display flex. And what that's going to do is it's going to turn this wrapper from display block, which it normally is, uh, into a flexible wrapper. So if we open that up in the browser, refresh, not too much happens except that it just takes uh, all of its children and snaps them like this. Um, now what we actually need to do is go one level further to each of its children and apply a flex value to each of those. So to select all of them at once, I'm just going to type dot box, which is going to select every single one of these ones right here because they all have a class of box. And I'm just going to say flex one, give it a save. And let's take a look at it in Google Chrome. Uh, one thing I should note here before I refresh is that um, you may remember that if you look here, you have all these prefixes such as dash webkit dash ms. Um, I'm using Google Chrome, which has standardized Flexbox, and we are able to use the unprefixed versions in Google Chrome. Uh, as we go on in this series, when, when it's getting ready for prime time, when you want to support uh, other browsers as well as legacy uh, devices, uh, you're going to want to make sure that we have all of our vendor prefixes as well. Uh, so the, the, this course will be uh, purely unprefixed. And uh, once we get to the end, we'll look at how we can convert that to support the uh, both vendor prefixes as well as um, the older version of Flexbox. So here we go. Display Flex on the parent, Flex 1 on the box. Go to here, refresh. And now you'll see here that I have all of my 10 divs and they go side by side and you see that they've taken the width of the body and divided it into 10 separate sections here. So if I were to resize my browser to be wider, it's going to resize it and it's going to go smaller. I didn't have to do anything in terms of widths here. I didn't have to say uh, width 10%, float left, uh, and any number of uh, items, maybe add a clear fix to the wrapper uh, and then we'd be off to the races. I simply just said flex one and by saying display flex and flex one, what we're, what we're doing there is we're saying um, this flex number is a proportion and we're saying each should be one proportion, which means that they are all equal. So when I refresh here, um, all of them are divided equally. Uh, throughout the uh, browser. Now this flex number right here is kind of interesting because it's not a pixel value, it's not an M value, it's not a percentage value, it's simply just a proportion compared to the rest. So this number could be 100 if I really wanted to and nothing changes when I refresh because this number is simply just in proportion to the rest. So if we were to add all those up, it would be a thousand. So 100 plus 100 plus 100 all the way down to 10. And we're saying that each one should take up a hundred of the total. Um, so I'm going to bring that back down to one and let's create a selector for box number three and give it a, a new flex value. So if I say dot box three flex two, what we're saying here is that box three should be two proportion compared to the rest. So if we look at a code we, we wrote earlier, flex one means that they're all one, two is going to be double that. So when I refresh here, three should be double of what all the rest are. Refresh, and now you'll see what happened there was the rest of these got smaller and three got bigger. So basically we said three needs to be double the size of the rest. If I, were to re if I were to resize, you'll see that the rest resize, but three also stays double what, it, uh, what the remaining other ones have been. So that's the very, very basics of getting up and running with Flexbox. We have a container and we have items inside of it. And we simply just say display flex and we assign a flex value to each of them. If I were to go ahead and do flex box six, 
flex four, you'll now see that six is four times the size of the other ones. Three is still double, and then the remaining ones are uh, just taking the rest of the room and splitting it up equally between the two. Uh, one other thing I should note before I end it off, uh, we also have something called inline-flex, which is very similar to uh, the difference between inline and block. And uh, as you know, block elements extend the entire width of the browser, while inline elements only take the amount of space that they need. Uh, so if you're ever looking for um, not the entire width of your container, simply use inline flex instead of flex. That's it for now. Be sure to check out the next video, which looks at rows, columns, which direction they show up on the page, as well as how we can use Flexbox to reorder elements on the page without actually having to reorder them in our HTML. See you then.